Good evening. My name is Sandra O, oh, and it's a pleasure for me to say welcome to the Graham Norton Show. Good evening and welcome to the show. It's Friday night and of course it's VE Day, 75 years since the end of the Second World War and we're celebrating with a bank holiday. Hey, who doesn't love a bank holiday? You know, a lie-in, chance to spend all day at home doing nothing. It is an opportunity though to spend time alone with your children. Mmm, fun. Another anniversary this week though, on Monday it was Star Wars Day, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you, Kenneth. Kind of Clever, right? Yeah. Yeah. All over the country, people were celebrating. Well, either that or that man was just getting on the train to go back to work. The world over, people have been saying, I am your father, in a husky voice. Yeah. And why not dress up as your favourite Star Wars character? Fun. I mean, something like Jabba the Hutt would be hard, though. You'd need acres of latex and rubber. Or this. What's in that bag? A better Jabba the Hutt costume? You can't go wrong with Princess Leia, though. No. Oh, I stand corrected. You can go wrong with Princess Leia. When ordering a costume, though, very important to get the size right. <laughs> I think I can see his lightsaber. Uh, here's another robot. Ah, that's C-3PO, so called because that costume cost 3P. The fun thing about it is, though, the whole family can join in with dressing up. Ah, kill me now, you must. Happy Star Wars Day, everybody. We've got a great show. Uh, Killing Eve star Sandra O oh will be dropping in from California. Funny men Rama Shranganathan and Rob Beckett will be joining us. Strictly star Oti Mabusi will be here. But we begin with one of my favourite actors. He's the star of The Hunger Games and The Devil Wears Prada. And now stunning fans with his cocktail mixing skills. It's Stanley Tucci. Hi, Stanley. Hello, Graham. <laughs> uh, how are you? Where did we find you in lockdown? Yeah, I'm in lockdown uh, at my house in London. Uh, I'm in my studio, which is at the back of the garden. And, um, you know, we've been here for six weeks with uh, five children. No, wow. more than that. Six, because the <laughs> twins had a... <laughs> That's not a great sign, once, once, once you get past three, it's like, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, with a friend, the kids had a, a friend from university who couldn't get back to her parents, so she's with us too. So you've got all the kids in the house. Matteo, is Matteo the youngest? Is he the youngest, Matteo? No, the youngest is two. That's Amelia. Matteo is five. And is Matteo the one who's weirdly become very, very posh? Yeah. Yeah, we don't, we don't know why he's so posh. We don't. My wife is sort of not, she's not really posh. She speaks eloquently and, you know, she's not. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't understand it. I just don't get it. I was... <laughs> He's the kind of kid who says he was <clears throat> looking for something a while ago in his playroom and he couldn't find it. We looked around and said, well, maybe it's over there or maybe it's over there. Maybe it's... And he said, well, I mean, it can't just have vanished. <laughs> who says that? He was four. <laughs> who says that? Does he think you're the butler? Does he know you're his father? <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, who's the American guy? Why is he so crass? <laughs> <laughs> and I like the way people are finding different things to do in, in uh, lockdown. You know, uh, home fitness, uh, meditation. You've gone the booze route. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> Maybe, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, cocktails in the afternoon. Uh, do you post your um, mixology every day or just when the mood takes you? No, no just when the... Just when I'm not too drunk to work my phone is when I do it. No, when I, we, we're just sort of doing it per periodically, every, every, every week or so, something like that. Well, people are loving them. Uh, we've got some tweets here. Uh, uh, who yeah. knew Stanley Tucci making a Negroni was my kink? Uh, here's somebody else. I want Stanley Tucci to manhandle me the way he slams down his cocktail ingredients. <laughs> and, uh, I know, even... and that was my agent. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> And even Chris Evans. Chris Evans posted this. I love Stanley Tucci. On some, most days, after we finished filming on the first Captain America movie, Stanley would make his martinis in his trailer. Would you do that every day, the, the, the martinis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always have a... I like to bring, have a portable uh, cocktail set that I, I bring to set, and at the end of the day, 
if if, the, if it's the appropriate time, we, uh, we we I make martinis for whoever would like to join me. That is such a lovely thing. Well, it's That's nice. A... You know, it's civilized. Very civilized. And yeah. one of the other things you've done is you've got involved in a book. Uh, yeah. that's raising money for charities. Uh, tell us about the book um, and, and what it's doing. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's really simply a compilation of, uh, of stories, of, of different people's stories about the NHS <clears throat> and how the NHS has uh, benefited them over the years. And, you know, mine, mine, they asked me to do it and I was more than happy to do it because all, the, all of the money will go directly to the NHS. Um, and... Uh, for me, as an American, uh, be, being in England, it's it's just a, it, I'll, I still can't really get used to it, which is what I wrote in the piece that that you can walk into a place and and if your kid gets hurt or somebody's sick, you can walk in there and they go hi, how are you? And the doctor deals with it, and then you just leave. That doesn't happen in America. In fact, the opposite happens in America. Wow. Yeah. And the, the book's been put together by uh, Adam Kay. Adam Kay, who, yeah. Who was a doctor and now is a comedian yes. and a writer. Yes. And, and who, so who else is in the book? It's not just you. No, it isn't. I tried to have just me, but they <laughs> insisted they wanted other people. Uh, you're in the book, aren't you? Yes, I, I am. Yes, you're in the book. Paul McCartney, Sir Paul McCartney's in the book. Don French, Jack Whitehall, Amelia Clark. No, it's a, it's a great it's a great group. Well, Stanley Tucci, always a pleasure to see you. At Dear NHS, 100 Stories to Say Thank You will be published on the 9th of July. Enjoy your cocktail hour. Bye-bye, Stanley. Bye-bye. Good night. See you. Bye. Now, like Stanley, I think a lot of people in lockdown are beginning to experiment with cocktails. Is breakfast too early to have a drink? Hey, not if it's a bacon martini. No bacon, no problem. Use sausage. Perhaps you prefer a traditional prawn cocktail. <laughs> but remember, if you're garnishing your drink, don't overdo it. They've overdone it. But perhaps, if you don't enjoy cocktails, you'd like to make your own booze, like this lady in Poland who's just about to open her latest batch of black currant wine. Mm, I wonder if it's aged well. Uh, yeah, I've just examined the bottle. Got my glass. Gorgeous. No, no, it has not aged well. Hey, my next guest is the double Golden Globe winning star of Grey's Anatomy and Killing Eve, currently in its third hit season. Let's start with a clip. Astrid joins me now. It's Sandra. Oh, hello. Hello, Graham. It's so nice to meet you finally through Zoom. Uh, well, <laughs> welcome to the show. Well, some of it anyway. Actually, do you know what? Before I say another thing, can I just say that couch is lovely. It's gorgeous. Oh, do you, <laughs> you know, this is like, uh, you know, there's doing these calls and things. It's like, it's always like you have to have a neutral background or blah, blah, blah. I took the art off the wall because it cuts at a weird place. <laughs> but I, but I, but I've always liked this couch. It's a bit, I see it's a dragon. <laughs> and what is it? Like, is it needlepoint? What is it? No, it's, it's a certain type of tap. It's just like, a, uh, but it's a great dragon. It's, it's lovely. Just, it, I'm in my breakfast nook. Thank you. Now, is this the home that has, it, is, is it like livestock? Is it, is it like a little farm? <laughs> you know, there are, there are chickens in my neighbor's yard. 
And um, so I go over there and visit them regularly. Um, no, I, no, I live right in Los Angeles. I don't live on a place with a lot of land or anything like that. So it's, um, it's very steady living. Well, somebody's got chickens. You, you posted this, this uh, video of you visiting the chickens. I know, it was so ah. weird. Is, is that lockdown or wine? What's caused that? Is, that? <laughs> that, is, that was, I don't know how many weeks deep into COVID, but I, I, a friend of mine made that little video and then it was so absurd, but also really, really, you know, uh, capturing a moment um, in, in, in lockdown because I, it's clearly, I'm not paying attention to anything that I'm wearing and I'm trying to mimic the sound of other birds in my neighborhood um, and speak to them. But yes, there's a full glass of wine in my hand. Yeah, too right. <laughs> uh, Killing Eve, uh, such, such, such a huge hit. And uh, we saw the famous scene there on the, the bus. That must have been, like doing a fight scene's hard anyway, but trying to choreograph a fight scene on a bus must be extra complicated. Yes, we were shooting that around, uh, actually uh, around Notting Hill, I think. And we were just on this very, very, very slow loop that goes around and we're shooting on a, on a live bus, which is actually quite, quite great. It's challenging in a lot of ways because also you have <clears throat> all your crew members with cameras and sound equipment moving along with you. And there was a bit of a, a fight sequence there. So um, it was fun, very fun. And that, a kind of chemistry between the two of you, between Jodie Comer, yeah. who plays Villanelle, and, and yeah. yourself. I mean, did, did you know that was going to be there? Or does it develop? Is that just good acting? What's the story? Um, you know, all those three things. You're saying, did you know? Did it develop? And is it good acting? I think it's all three things. Can I just when say, I I'm so impressed you were listening to what I was saying. <laughs> I'm hardly listening to myself. <laughs> it's like, wow, Sandra, oh, listen to the question. <laughs> I do. That's I very, tried very to. Impressive. I really, yeah. I tried to. And so those three points, it's like when I first met Jody and we had our first kind of chemistry read together, I knew that we had good chemistry. I could just tell because it was actually speaking about listening. It was, I could, it, it was the way that we were listening together and the way that I could hear. And I, it's not even so much I could hear, I could feel how she was receiving anything that I was moving, giving to her and that she would react. And I, I do think chemistry in some ways between actors is about listening. So I think it's to have that skill as well. Sorry? Oh, yeah. I, no, I was listening. I was, I, I no, was so listening. It's, it's, it's like I, I set you up and you just... <laughs> nice. That's good listening. <laughs> but now we, we talked about the being on hits. You know, you're on uh, Grey's Anatomy, you're on Killing Eve. But there's another thing you're in that people come up to ask you about, isn't there? Oh, this is actually quite from the, from the past. Um, when I, it was actually, I think my first American movie uh, it, 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 that I, that I, that I shot. Oh, no, 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 I, I'm thinking about, I, you know what? I was thinking about Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean, who is obviously a very, very, very famous character for you. Um, yeah. That, that movie, his first movie was my very first, my very first gig in America, in America. You're in, you're in the Mr. Bean movie. Dude, I mean, I wish that you could just show, yeah, right now. I'm, I'm in Mr. Bean. It was my very first gig uh, in, in LA in a, on, a, on a film in LA. So we shot that. It must have been the fall of 95. And I met Rowan and uh, Harris Ewan, fantastic cast. And Peter, Peter McNichol, who is just a genius. I was very young. I was probably around 23, 24. And I had just come to LA. And it was recently on television. And I was like, I cannot believe my hair. But that was, I got to tell you, such a great experience. I, there's a scene when we're all together in a conference room and Roan is, Roan was doing his thing and we could never get through a take. We could never get through a take. And it was such a great, rich experience for me. Um, uh, shooting, that was my first Amer first big film. Okay, we've got, we've got the, this is you, we found it. This is, this is so live. You speak, we find. <laughs> uh, we've got the picture. There she is. Well, that is elaborate hair. <laughs> but also, isn't it great that, you know, because someone else might have come to L.A. and been in the Mr. Bean movie, but then never 
been in other things. <laughs> so they don't get to look back and, you know, enjoy it. It's interesting. It's like when you just, if you can just hang on, <laughs> if you can just stick around and hang on, it's amazing all the things that oh, you learn that come back to you and that you can then, you know, refer to many years later on your show. It's a, uh, but I think the one that you were talking about, it was just a, um, Another one of my first uh, uh, earlier American films was a film called Princess Diaries with Anne Hathaway and the, and the great um, Julie Andrews, and that's the one. And that you also... played a vice principal. Yes, I played. I went through. You know, with actors, you can go through seasons of things. I played what at one point from the early to the mid to the late nineties. All I played were detectives, and then I got a lot of teachers. Teachers, and then I moved into doctors, but like a lot, and then I moved into a lot of like a lot of people were wanting me to play, um, uh, like psychiatrists and therapists, and then I ha would have to be very, very judicious of of how many doctors I would play. But yes, this was uh, the character of a vice principal. And there's a line people like you saying from yes. that movie, and I haven't seen it since, but I remember it. This is a phone. This is a phone. Okay, mime. Very good. There's a fine, very, very good line. Theater school. Uh-huh. 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 The queen is coming. I think that's the one. <laughs> Beautiful. It, it moved me. I've got Girl. goosebumps. <laughs> uh, Sandra Oh, it's been a joy talking to you. Uh, thank you so much thank for joining us. Uh, I hope Eve, I can meet you in person one day. Yes. Ideally, that would happen. Uh, Killing Eve continues on BBC iPlayer and new episodes air on BBC One at nine o'clock on Sundays. Sandra Oh, thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Bean, who knew? Now, my next guests are a comedy duo back together again for their Sky One show, Rob and Ramesh Versus. It's Rob Beckett and Ramesh Ranganathan. Hello. Hello, Graham. Hello, Graham. You're right. Good. Thanks. It's welcome back to Rob. Ramesh, you've never been on the show before. No, and I've got to be honest with you. I'm slightly annoyed by it. The, the, the idea that my <laughs> my first time that I'm coming on the show, I've had to be accompanied by Rob, as if I'm not yeah. a strong enough proposition on my own. It's actually but... ruined my third time on the show, actually. <laughs> oh, come been on! <laughs> come on! Absolutely outrageous. But, Rob, back at the last time you were on, uh, people noticed something about you uh, and on the couch. Have you seen this photoshopped picture of you on the couch? Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it's horrendous, isn't it? <laughs> That was the tallest sofa you've ever had. <laughs> so that's the photoshopped one. It made me laugh. And then someone showed me what you actually looked like on the sofa. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely no need for Photoshop there at all. <laughs> <laughs> Complete Let's... waste of Photoshop. Uh, well, first of all, I sat next to Merchant, which never helps, because he's... <laughs> and then uh, Calvin Harris came out, and then... The other massive geezer, who's that? The, who's the bloke on the What's his name? The um, Rag and Bone oh, Man. Rag and Bone Man, that's him. Absolute yeah, yeah, yeah. unit, the geezer. Yeah. <laughs> and so listen, you guys, uh, you're back with uh, Rob and Ramesh versus. Now, do you just hang out for the show, or are you actually friends? No, we well, are. We are actually friends. <laughs> we're, we're very good friends. Rob is one of my one of my best <laughs> mates. What I, what I would say is. That when, because Rob and I started out doing stand up together and we, you know, the early gigs we saw each other. And, and what I would say about Rob is when I first saw him, I would describe his energy as highly punchable. And so the <laughs> idea, the idea that I'd have ended up being friends with him didn't really occur to me. But as mm. I've got to know him, you sort of, you sort of get beyond that and uh, we've become very good friends, haven't we? I'm basically a vitamin supplement for Romesh. He doesn't want to have me, but he needs me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, like, and you forget to take a... But I'm there, so I will be in his face and sort of sometimes annoy him into doing stuff. But I think you're happy that we've done it after, Rob, aren't you? Yeah, but what I would say is that Rob doesn't realise when he's exceeded my RDA limit <laughs> of, of yeah. that vitamin. There, there yeah. is a point at which I've had enough of that yeah. vitamin and Rob keeps on dosing up. It's, it's you can have too much vitamin C. You can't, yeah, you can't do a full tube of yeah. Barocca every yeah. day. I've started turning orange <laughs> and getting really annoyed. <laughs> um, but now, are cracks appearing in the relationship? Because um, is it true that you, you no longer travel together? Well, no, we do travel together. I, there was rumours that Ramesh was trying to get a different flight, but... <laughs> We don't sit next to each other on the plane. He will not allow that. No, no, OK. <laughs> First of all, what happened, Graham, is that on this series, sometimes we travelled separately, and I discovered that that was paradise. 
Because when you... <laughs> because I love Rob, but he has got no idea what <clears throat> just giving somebody a bit of room means. So what will happen is we'll be on the plane, even when we... We'll, sit, we'll be sitting separately, and then Rob, every half hour, just comes to check in with me to see if my emotions are in sync with his on the flight. Are you feeling angry? And then 20 minutes, are you feeling so angry you're starting to get a bit sad about it? Are you watching films and getting more emotional because you're at altitude? Yes, Rob, I, you can sit down and... Yeah. How, about, how about you save some of this, Rob, and we can have a catch-up when we get off the plane, rather than, you know, <laughs> keep checking in every five minutes. But you, even if you are happy and being polite, you still sound annoyed with people. That is one of your, one of your biggest problems. That is true, yeah. It was difficult for me. My wife didn't really believe I was happy about the birth of any of our children. Because I can't, I can't, I find, I find it difficult to convey joy and happiness. The proposal, will you marry me? Yeah. Are you gonna do? Will you? What will you know? Okay. Yeah. Like, this is like Zoom therapy. <laughs> uh, and, but Rob, here's the thing. So back to the Sky One show. Uh, now you cover various subjects. Uh, yeah. There's ballet, basketball, cricket. Now, how did basketball uh, end up with you having colonic irrigation. One Whose idea the, was that? One of the most tenuous and unacceptable things that I've ever had to do on a TV show. Just, it was in my life, actually. For some reason, it's your, it was your fault. Wasn't it your idea, Rob, or something? Well, I, I think with these shows, I, we're very lucky to do these shows, to travel the world and go to amazing places and do stuff. When I watch people do this, I get a bit jealous and think, oh, the lucky gits and all that. So I think we need to do something within each episode that the audience will go, oh, actually, I'd rather just save up and go and go there <laughs> rather than having to go through this ordeal. So we ended up having, and also as well, I am willing to have a colonic if I get to watch Ramesh have one. And it was one of the greatest days of my life. <laughs> um, you do look like you're really enjoying it, Rob. I've never... Oh, I can't explain. <laughs> I didn't realise how much water they put in you. But Ramesh had a real tough time. You could, it was difficult for you, Ramesh. You just, I was sort of laughing along in pain and not really enjoying it, but Ramesh looked so sad when he was... I, I don't know why people don't explain more clearly what it's like to go for a colonic, OK? Because <laughs> the I, knew about, yours, Ramesh. I knew I knew all about the... I knew all about the, the, the tube going up the bum. I knew all about the viewing tube, where it shows everything coming out. What I didn't know <laughs> was that you spend the whole time feeling like you're going to burst. I, I, I did not... I did not realise that that was going to happen. And, and the truth is, I I genuinely was feeling a bit confident about because I thought, well, I'm vegan. I'm not going. I'm not going to be one of these guys that's got undigested red meat sitting in my bowels or whatever. This is going to be good. A whole button mushroom came out my butt. <laughs> Nothing else. Completely <laughs> untouched, as if preserved in amber for for an archaeological <laughs> dig. A completely fully formed mushroom. Oh, but the so thing about the viewing disgusting. tube, is it like the generation game where <laughs> they just, <laughs> is it just going by? Button mushroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it's like. Funny and... enough, I had a cuddly toy come out as well. I don't know where that <laughs> came from. <laughs> Uh, so listen, first episode, first episode was the one where you went to the uh, Royal Ballet in Birmingham. Now, not to body shame anyone in any way, but Ramesh, you're not like an ad for veganism. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think people are looking at that going, hmm, vegan, you say. It's not just I felt like Ramesh got a bit distracted from the start because he's got a bit of a he's got a bit of a complex about a certain part of his body, which in ballet you really do need to help you perform. When you say Ramesh, that's what sort of distracted you from the art. No, basically what what Rob's getting at is I don't have any ass at all. Nothing. Nothing. No, show so, him. Get I, I, up, I, I, Ramesh. Get up, show up. <laughs> I mean I can show I can show you. Basically, I, I just have, I just have a completely flat surface. I just have a line at the top of my legs, which, in compact, <laughs> it, 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 it goes it, back <laughs> to thigh, shoulders back thigh, no ass, absolutely no ass whatsoever. That looks bad when you're stood next to a normal human. When you're stood next to the Royal Ballet Company of Birmingham, it is a, absolute humiliation. Oh, the arse is like racehorses. It's incredible, insane. Uh, listen, we've got a clip. We've got a clip. Uh, this is the two of you in your ballet class. That was good.
good. Yes. Good. Absolutely smashed it over here. Yes, it sure right. Did you do yours all right? I don't know. You did know, you yes. absolute prick. <laughs> Uh, well, now, I have to tell you, uh, my next guest, I think, is on the line, and she knows a lot about dance, uh, Oti Mavusi. Hello. Hi, Graham. Hi. Uh, what did you think of Robin Ramesh? I am so glad that they are successful comedians. <laughs> <laughs> I actually loved it, Rob. I thought your tour was, like, really random, but really good. That means you have power in your legs. Oh, Does don't, it? don't big Does him it? up. Please do not big him up. Sorry Why? about it. Sorry Why about him, OT? Sorry about him, OT. He's had a bad day. Keep talking. Power in my legs, yeah? <laughs> I have to compliment him where compliment is due. And I thought you guys did well. And Rob, you were showing your, your arms. You were leading Thank the you. leg. Mamesh, I mean... My arms were there as well, OT. I didn't hide mine. They were there as well. <laughs> no arms, no arms. It's great. <laughs> was, was Ramesh any good, OT? I think it's a he confidence thing with him. He was yeah. It was the, that first arm that he gave yeah. and how serious he, he had, the serious look in his face. That was amazing. That's just thanks. his face, though. So thanks, very, <laughs> th thanks very much for one of the most <laughs> generic, non-committal compliments I've ever heard, I think. Yeah, he can't really dance, but he had his face with him. Yeah, had his, had it, yeah his face looked serious and he had an arm for a bit. Thank you, Ace. What about on Strictly? <laughs> Who do you reckon would be best on Strictly? I think, hands down, Rob, Rob would be amazing. Thanks so much, Ace. What a pleasure. <laughs> What wow. a pleasure to chat to you for the first and last time. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't worry, I'll bring you back on when I come on again, Rob. Oh Hopefully, OT will be Hey, listen, boys, I'll let you go practice your dance moves. Thank uh, you very much, Rob, uh, Rob and Ramesh versus continues on Sky One Tuesdays at 9, also available on Now TV. Bye, guys. Take care Bye, of yourselves. Thank you. Bye, Sorry about Ramesh. Bye, Sorry OT, about Rob. forever. <laughs> Uh, so, Oti, how are you? You're good. I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. Thank you very much. Uh, but now, dancing is keeping you busy at this this time. Yeah, I have literally haven't stopped. Um, I started uh, dance classes with my husband that we've been doing online for free uh, every morning and every evening. And we've just been trying to get people up and get them healthy and get them moving. Um, and it ended up then turning into having a whole festival with my friends. Wow. And is it dancing for kids or is it dancing for anybody? It's dancing for everybody. So uh, with this thing, it's called Home Festival that we started. It's me and my friend Karen, her partner David and my husband. Um, and it's a whole day full of festivities. So she does the workout at 10 in the morning and then I'll do the morning dance class at 11.30. And then we have makeup tutorials by people like Bryony and we have athletes like Boris Becker coming in and giving tennis lectures and Greg Rutherford, and uh, we have reading for kids, we have learning maths and geography for kids, um, and we have other dancers teaching other dance styles. So it's literally a whole event that you can find online, because, yeah, we got a job to do, Graham. <laughs> well, do you have a job to do? Because I know it's only May, but people are already talking about Strictly kind of going, no, will this affect, <laughs> you know, forget a global pandemic. Yeah. What about Strictly? And um, what's the word on the dance floor? What do you know? I've spoke to the producers and they said that they're trying to do everything they can to make sure that the show goes ahead. Um, and obviously we all have to abide by government guidelines and just wait and see what happens. But um, what's happening now is that we're filming three uh, specials. <laughs> where we're talking about the show Blackpool, Movie Week, and uh, Musicals Week. And it's all the remaining pros, the remaining presenters, and the remaining judges. And we're just talking about our highlights and trying to bring back that strictly fever that hopefully everybody's missing and loves. And of course, as the reigning queen of Strictly, uh, do you have the do you have the trophy in your house? I, I, I do, I do. Do you know what? Let me let me. I have to say this. When people ask me to do it, I have to do this. Oh, where is it? Where is it? But because it's you that's asking me, I'm like, <laughs> I'm happy to bring it out. Is that the one from the TV? It's, no. No, it's not the one from the TV. It's the one that you get to keep. So that thing that they give you on TV, I'm not being rude, but it looks quite cheap. <laughs> they don't give you that. <laughs> this is what you get to keep. You can take it to lunch with you. It serves many purposes as well. Yeah, you can put it in recycling, yeah. all sorts. <laughs> You can put it in recycling, uh, but then you go on <laughs> tour and hopefully if you win it, you get the TV one. 
which is this one. Oh. There you go. So wait a minute. Did you? So you won the series and you won the tour. Yes, I won the tour with Danny. Oh, sorry about that. Yes. Uh, well, the other dancers must hate you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're all best friends. We're best friends. Edward said, "Good luck with everything." Is your husband Marius there? Is he? Is he in the house? <laughs> oh my goodness! Look at him. <laughs> oh, there he is. Hello. I just wondered, could you give us a little bit, a, a twirl to, yeah. to, yeah? Absolutely. Okay. 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 Yes. We're going to do it to Footloose. We're going to do a little jive because it's jive week. You okay. Know? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Here we go. Beautiful. Keep dancing, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. It's the neighbours I feel sorry for. Uh, now, that little musical burst is, in fact, our music ration for tonight because, unfortunately, Niall Horan is unwell and can't be with us this evening. But don't worry, Niall fans, he will be joining us very soon. And, Niall, if you are watching, I hope you feel better very soon. But we do have time for some red chairs, so let's get going. Who's up first? Hello. Hello. Oh, it's Dress Up Friday in your house. <laughs> What's your name? My name's Natasha. Natasha, and where are you? Uh, I'm in Ashby in the Midlands. Very good. And you haven't let standards drop. You look lovely. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what do you do in normal circumstances? Uh, I work for the National Trust. Oh, so I know they're all shot, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, OK. So uh, you're doing this. Uh, off we go with the story. So um, I'd just come back from a super intense gym workout and my legs were feeling really wobbly, but I'd gone for a shower, uh, realised I'd left my shampoo outside of the shower, opened the door to reach for said shampoo, and as I went to reach for it, my legs gave way and I slipped and I fell straight onto a very pointy um, shower gel bottle that penetrated my bum hole. Oh, that has never happened. No one has ever by accident. Uh, okay, who's up next? Hello. Hi, Graham. Uh, um, who are you? Oh, my name's Jennifer. Jennifer, and where do we find you today, Jennifer? Um, I'm from Oak Hill, Virginia, which is outside of Washington, DC. Okay, and uh, in normal circumstances, uh, what do you do? Um, well, I'm actually still working. I am a dog walker. Dogs gotta walk. Yes, they do. <laughs> Fish gotta swim. <laughs> um, okay, off you go with your story. Um, so this happened many years ago. I went out with my roommate Chris for dinner, and we had a lovely dinner and decided to keep carrying on with some drinks at the bar. Uh, went up to the bar and we were having a couple beers and chatting and having a, a very good time. Every time I looked up, this girl was staring at me from across the bar. And I thought she looked familiar, so I said to Chris, I think this is this girl that I went to college with. I really didn't like her. She was mean. I thought she was <laughs> ugly. She looked like a horse. So the whole time, the horse face girl is staring at me. <laughs> we have a couple more beers, and I have my liquid courage and decide that I'm going to go over and confront her. As I start to get up, I realize that it was not a girl from college. I was looking at myself in a mirror the entire time. So, Good yeah, I thought, story. I, yeah. You can so walk. Was, Okay, you can thank walk. you. <laughs> Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, right, that is it for tonight. By the way, if you do have a red chair story you'd like to share, then why not get in touch using the address that's on your screen right now, not forgetting to leave a contact number. Uh, that's it for tonight. Do join us again next week, same time, same place, where my guests will include Mark Ruffalo, Miranda Hart, Will Ferrell, and the stars of the hit drama Normal People. Till then, good night, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>